last but not least, and I'll try not to keep you away from your lunch, um, my name is Jisoo. Um, I work at Ray Ormond Street Hospital as a nephrology fellow. I'm going to have a look at um, comparing biopsy outcomes between and renal allograft survival outcomes between urological versus non-urological patients um, as a retrospective analysis. Oh, works very nice. Um, so congenital anomalies of the kidney urinary tract is one of the leading causes of chronic kidney disease in the pediatric population. Of, they contribute at least 40% of incident pediatric patients with renal disease. And as we've already had a bit of an introduction by Mr. Nikos Kassaris, historically there has been a presumption that in view of the suboptimal bladder emptying, there it would inevitably lead to poor renal allograft survival. Now this debate continues as we have now had, we face with a large spectrum of disease severity and there has been clear advances in medical and surgical therapies. And there is also a difference in terms of access to transplantation between different registries. The data we're looking at is in view of the fact that there is a little gap regarding comparing renal allograft biopsy results between these populations. So in terms of method, we retrospectively reviewed all registered patients with, um, who were recipients of uh, renal transplantation at the single center. It was from, it was, we were looking at the, those who were registered under us from 2015, looked back to all of their archive notes and pathology results. The definition for failing renal allograft that we used was between stage four and five chronic kidney disease, whereby the EGFR was at least less than 30. Uh, statistical programs R, XL, and SPSS were used in conjunction together to ensure that there was um, a robustness in the statistics that we were doing. So there were, there were actually 187 patients, but we had to exclude four due to missing data. Out of the 183, as you would guess, the majority of them had a urological diagnosis, and it so happened that the majority of patients registered at the time were male. The mean follow-up data per patient was about 65 months. For those of you who work in years such as me, it was about five years. And patient survival, they all were still alive. And unfortunately, the renal allograft survival was about 82.5%. The median renal allograft EGFR for the entire cohort at the time of um, data analysis was around 64. And if you divide that up between urological versus non-urological patients or boys versus girls, the median EGFR was comparable. There was no statistical difference between them. The distribution of gender, as I have already indicated, there was a majority of urological patients and in fact, uh, boys with a urological condition, thinking about our posterior urethral valve children and other packets. Um, in terms of distribution of age at time of transplant, although there doesn't appear to be that much of a difference between um, patients with a urological diagnosis versus non-urological diagnosis, so as you can see with urological, the median was about 5.9 years old almost six years old, and for non-urological, they're almost about eight years old. I have to say this in years rather than months. And there was a little difference between boys and girls, whereby boys happened to be transplanted a little bit earlier than girls. In terms of what kind of kidneys they received, the majority of mm -hmm. kidneys that were contributed to these children in our center were living-related donors, and then the next majority would be deceased donors. Um, a small proportion of our children had unrelated living donors as well as ABO incompatible and HLA incompatible. Now, how many biopsies did each child receive? Most of them had at least two biopsies post-transplantation. Maybe an odd one or two had 11 biopsies to themselves. But as you can see, there is no big difference between how many biopsies a urological patient ended up having versus a non-urological patient. So this is what you've been waiting for. Um, so when we looked at them overall, as expected, the types of biopsy results associated with poor allograft outcome 
happen to be chronic change, um, antibody-mediated rejection and T-cell-mediated rejection. And when looking at the split between urological children versus non-urological children, there was actually no difference in the type of results they got. And when we looked at the type of results between boys versus girls, the only difference between them happened to be boys got a, a bit more chronic change than girls. Now, looking at the actual survival of the renal allograft, as you might remember, I've mentioned an EGFR of less than 30, we found there was actually no difference in terms of renal allograft survival between the two urological versus non-urological children. And for boys and girls, there was no difference in their uh, renal allograft survival either. So I, I've basically given you a presentation saying there isn't much of a difference these days. <laughs> um, so there appears to be no big difference in terms of, thankfully, the type of kidney they received, the age at time of transplant, mm -hmm. although in brackets, boys a little bit earlier than girls, renal allograft biopsy results, and the overall survival. Now, the question is why are these boys getting transplanted a little bit younger than girls, um, irrespective of their, their underlying diagnosis? And why are they getting a little bit more chronic change than girls? So that's a question we could potentially look into in the future. Thank you.